Hey masterminds, welcome back to Master Our Media. Today we're talking about Dragon Ball Super episode 83 and so many strange things happened in this episode. It was very much a slice of life episode and let's talk about it. First of all, Beerus is saying, hey, go get the warriors. He's telling Kaioshin to go search on other planets in the universe for very strong fighters. To that point that we learned that since we've lost so many planets in universe seven, there's only 28 planets with life forms now. I mean, that's crazy. Crazy. And a universe is practically infinite and there's only 28 planets left with life forms. That is why the mortal level of universe seven is so low because there's been so much destruction. This also is telling me that Kaioshin is not doing his damn job. So as the God of creation, the Kaioshin, he's supposed to be creating planets and doing things of that nature. So this guy is the worst. I mean, our Kaioshin is a piece of crap. Basically, he doesn't care at all about helping civilizations or creating new planets and new civilizations. And he's basically basically ruining the mortal level and the universe in general. He's not doing his job. But on the other hand, Beerus has been doing his job and he has been destroying planets. We've seen him destroy a planet with a whole civilization on it. So Beerus is doing his job, but Kaioshin is not. And I think that is part of the, the main reason why the mortal level is so low. It's Kaioshin's fault more than anything. It's at this point that Goku starts talking about Krillin and he says, hey, Gohan, come here. And they basically start having this image battle and it's all in their head. Now, the, we've seen characters do this before. We've seen Trunks, Gohan and Krillin all do this kind of image battle in your head where they're fighting opponents. But this is kind of unique case because he's like doing it with Gohan, which is really weird. I mean, do they have like telekinetic abilities now uh that doesn't really make any sense to me i mean unless they're both seeing a different fight in their own head that would make more sense to me so uh, or, or they're both seeing basically the exact same outcome and that's that krillin loses but it was kind of interesting to me at this point we get to see a lot of krillin's techniques and as i said in my previous video um, about the spoilers for episode 84 is that Krillin is a very good martial artist and he has a slew of techniques and he could still be very beneficial and probably knock a few people out in this tournament just because he knows so many techniques. They start wondering about Goten and Trunks and them fighting in the tournament. And at this point, Goku says they're it's not good. They're too straightforward. They're too inexperienced. And this tournament is going to require more than just power. So let's get Master Roshi, whose power level is like two, three hundred. I mean, this is just stupid. Like, I'll take brute power of two Super Saiyans any day over Master Roshi, who's old and weak. And I mean, yeah, he has some cool techniques. And I understand that Goten and Trunks, they fool around. And, you know, it's very easy that they'll get knocked off because they're not like paying attention and they're doing some stupid stuff, which is very, very common of them. You know, just act like idiots and, you know, basically mess up whatever they're trying to do. But at the same time, I'm still taking a Super Saiyan over Master Roshi any day, no matter how inexperienced or childish they are. I mean, you're talking about the fate of the, the universe here, you know, take a Super Saiyan over a guy whose power level is like 200, please. Uh, you know, I would I would have been much happier if it was like an age limit and I kind of saw this coming, but I just think it's silly. Anyways, I digress. Let's continue. Goku wants to take some Senzu beans and Whis tells him that's but it's not a warrior's ability. So you can't use Senzu beans. And then Goku tries to get Vegeta and entice him with all these really strong fighters. And he's talking about Topo and he says, I wasn't sure if I could even beat this guy even in blue form. Now, I'm not sure if he's saying that just to entice Vegeta about strong opponents. Now, I know a lot of you guys think that Goku and Topo were equal level and Topo still had a lot in him. But a lot of us also think that Goku could have absolutely stomped Topo if he went full power from the start. And I mean, as you can tell, as soon as he went Super Saiyan Blue, he didn't take any more hits after that. And to me, it seems like Goku is way stronger than Topo. So I guess it's a matter of opinion because we don't have proof of that. But Vegeta refuses because his baby's about to be born. And then Whis speeds up the pregnancy process. And I can't believe he did this for a few reasons. For one, he doesn't get destroyed if the universe gets destroyed. So I didn't really see any reason for him to really care that much about winning the tournament. I mean, there's really no incentive for him to have his universe win. Um, I mean, I guess unless he just doesn't want to be deactivated, but he's not going to die. So I guess that's his reasoning behind it. But he's still tinkering with things that he probably shouldn't. And to me, that's also 
almost like speeding up time a little bit. And, you know, gods aren't supposed to play with time either. So this really took me by surprise. And I'm really wondering if Whis has some hidden motive. I mean, why would he do that? I, I just don't understand why he would speed up that process. And then we get this hilarious picture of Vegeta hanging, <laughs> hiding behind a door as we get to see Bulla and Bulma. I mean, look at this man hiding behind the door. He doesn't even want to go say hi to his new baby. Now, I understand this picture is supposed to have some symbolism behind it, you know, and show some of his character growth and things like that. But I just think, you know, when you have a new baby, you don't hide behind a door. I just thought it was like really silly. I challenge you guys to meme this picture. Please meme this and link it below. So Vegeta wants to give Bala a Saiyan name, and then then his then Bulma just pops up. She's like, "Oh, I already decided on a name without even consulting the father. Her name's gonna be Bala." And uh, Vegeta is just a little bitch now, man. I mean, that's just terrible. I mean, you don't get any. The Prince of Saiyans doesn't get a say in what his his baby's name is. I mean, really. And then the final funny thing that happens in this episode is that Yamcha wants to join the Tournament of Power, and everybody's like, uh, no, that's okay, dude. I mean, with all the stigmas around him, I think it's kind of hilarious that even, like, Akira and Toei Animation, like, play the whole Yamcha thing off. Like, even the Z fighters are like, uh, that's that's okay, dude. Like, we, we don't need your help. We, we got enough fighters, you know. Nobody, nobody wants him. Nobody wants Yamcha on their team. And he's trying to play it cool. He thinks he's going to enter the Tournament of Power and be like, a badass but they're like nah you're prob probably gonna die in like half a second so you know we'll, we'll take master roshi over you anyways that was the end of the episode so we learned some things like important things like about the mortal level Overall, it was pretty much a comedy episode, and, you know, we got the introduction of Bola, which to some people is a big deal. The preview for episode 84 looks pretty cool, and I'll do my preview video and breakdown tomorrow for you guys, but it looks like it's going to be a pretty fun sparring match between Gohan and Krillin, so look out for that video tomorrow. Thanks for stopping by Master Media today. Leave your comments below about what you guys thought of this episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next episode preview. Peace.